In today's lecture video, I want to give you a little example on recycled streams with chemical reactions. I specifically chose this example to point out a few things that you guys normally struggle with. In this system, the reaction takes place where we take methane, oxygen, and we react the two with each other. But this specific system is also, we also have N2 fed to the system. So it takes place in the presence of N2. The chemical reaction that takes place is two mole of methane reacting with one mole of oxygen to form C2H4O2. Now I know this reaction is not really going to take place. Um, it's, it's a theoretical reaction for producing ethanol. But let's say it's happening. And then in our system, we are feeding 20 kilomoles of the methane, 20 kilomoles of oxygen, and 60 kilomoles of nitrogen. So it's clear that the nitrogen is the inert atmosphere. However, we also need to determine what the limiting reagent and the excess reagent is. And looking at the reaction, we see that if we have 20 kilomoles of methane coming in, we need 10 kilomoles of oxygen to react with it. That means the methane is the limiting reagent and that the excess oxygen is 100%. You should be able to calculate this by now. Now let's look at a mass balance problem with a recycle stream where we take this reaction into account. There we have a process flow diagram of the system where A is the feed, B is the feed to the reactor which includes the fresh feed plus the recycle stream, C is the product from the reactor, D is the product from the process, E is the split from, from C and P is the purge. Now in this specific example I want to add a separator at this point between C, D, and E, where we separate the product from the unreacted material. Now, let's say this is a magical thing again. Yet, um, however, in this specific example, there would be a way to separate the ethanol from the other, other gases by, for, for instance, uh, reducing the temperature. But there we have a mag magical separator. And in our case, this magical separator separates all the C2H4 that comes in to go out into the product stream D. We then also go to determine the composition of stream P and see that it only contains methane that's unreacted, oxygen that's unreacted, and the inert nitrogen that came in. So from this, it's clear that all the nitrogen coming in in A is going out in P. Now, this is an important thing to understand about recycle streams and recycle stream with purges. Everything that comes in must still go out. So all the components that comes in must go out, bar what has been reacted or consumed in my chemical reaction and what is produced in my chemical reaction. So if I do a elemental balance, all the elements coming in, the same mass of that elements must go out. Now, for the recycle, for the purge stream, Looking at this, we can see that all the nitrogen must go out of my purge stream. So I have a tie component between stream A and stream P that I can use. Another thing regarding recycle streams and purge streams that I frequently get asked is, how, do, how does this work? Because when I start the reaction up, everything that's coming in is going to go out in P and in D. And this is not completely true. So typically how we would run a system like this is we would close stream D and we would close stream P and keep up building the recycle stream until we have the recycle stream the size we want it to be. Then we would open P and D and have the product and the purge leave the system. Then the system will run at steady state. Remember, this is important. We typically do mass balance at steady state only. Now in this example I gave you, there's two more things we need. Well, there's more things we need to solve the problem. And I'm going to give you two more. The first thing I'm going to give you is the overall conversion. In this case, I say that the overall conversion is 0.8 or 80%. The other thing I'm going to give you for this specific example is to tell you that there's a relationship between the recycle stream and the fresh, fresh feed such that the fresh feed the relationship, the ratio of the fresh feed to the recycle stream is a ratio of one to nine. So this gives us a size that we make the recycle stream. 
Now let's solve this mass balance. And say I ask you to calculate all the fractions of all the components in all the streams and the mass flow rate for all the streams. What we need to do first is we need to figure out with this overall conversion what is happening to the system. Now the overall conversion tells us that 80% of the fresh feed of the limiting reagent is converted. So this means that 0 0.8 of 20, that's the methane which was the limiting reagent, is converting, forming to consume 16 kilomoles of the CH4 per hour. If we look at the stoichiometric coefficient, this tells us that we consumed 8 kilomoles of the O2 per hour because 2 kilomoles of the CH4 reacts with 1 kilomole of the oxygen to produce 1 kilomole ethanol. And this implies that we produce 8 kilomoles of ethanol per hour for the whole system. And that's the important bit, for the whole system. But before I get to that, you can see that this calculation I've just done is squiggly, or C. So the extent of reaction in this case is going to be 8. Let's talk about this overall production thing again. I told you that the overall conversion is 80%. So 80% of the fresh feed is converted. And like I said, that means we are forming 8 kilomoles per hour of ethanol. And that is leaving the system in D. Okay, so let's draw up a table to look at and populate with everything we have in here. Solving this mass balance is easiest when using a table. And this is the table I'm going to use. And you can see here I list all the streams from A to the recycle stream R. And I list all the components that I can have in the system. I also give a percentage composition for every single stream plus the flow rate for every single stream. And I tally up the totals for all the streams. All my values are in kilomoles per hour. So let's populate this with the things we know. We've included the composition of the feed. The first thing we know is that all the nitrogen coming in is leaving in P. Next, we can use the recycle rate ratio to calculate that the total volume out in the recycle is 900 kilomoles per hour. This implies that this should be given on a mole basis. Next, we can use the conversion or the extent of reaction to calculate the amount of the unreacted components out and the amount of the product out. And we've already said that we are producing 8 kilomoles of ethanol over the whole system. So let's populate this into the table. Completing the composition of these product stream D and the purge stream P. We have 4 kilomoles of the methane, 12 kilomoles of the oxygen, 16 kilomoles of the nitrogen is leaving the system. There's no ethanol in the stream, giving us 76 kilomoles per hour leaving a stream P. We can now calculate the mole fraction of all the components in stream P. Solving the rest of the mass balance becomes easy if we remember something important about the split point where stream E splits into P and R. And that is that the composition of streams E, P, and R should be exactly the same, seeing as the split point. So if we've calculated the composition of stream P, then the same composition would be in stream R and E. Remember, we're not splitting any species around that split point. There's no mass being converted into any products or consumed in any reactions. This means that we now have the composition of stream R and also the size of stream R which means we can calculate the number of moles of every species in that stream, which we can now populate. We also know that stream R plus P must be equal to stream E, seeing that the stream E is split into R and P. We can now use this to calculate the size of stream E. And we can now calculate this and use it as a check. Or calculate this from here and use it as a check to see if the mass balance we've done up to now is correct. So from here, we can now use the exact same principle where we say that stream C equals stream E 
plus D. Although it's a separator, we know that the composition changes over the stream. The total mass flow rate in streams E and D must still be the same as streams C. Adding them all up yields this, and now we can calculate the percentage of every one of the components in the stream. We can also now calculate stream B by saying that A plus R equals to B. And populating the table, we have a complete mass balance. We have calculated the composition of every single stream and also the flow rate of every single stream. The other thing, last thing I want you to see from this is we can now, like I told you, showed you last time, calculate the single pass conversion by looking at the conversion over the reactor. And you can see that the conversion over the reactor is much smaller than the conversion over the whole process. And it's related to this relationship, the, re the ratio of the recycle stream to the fresh feed. I want you to go work this out on your own, something that I gave you all the tools last time. I hope this example helped. See you again next week.